Brad, thank you very much for joining us, and congratulations. It's the first time we've spoken since uh, your win in that primary. That's great. Thanks for having me on, Greta. Great to be with you. Well, I'm glad to have you. I'm curious, what national politicians uh, whose names I might uh, know called you to congratulate you? Oh, a couple of the heads of the Republican Party gave me a ring. It's pretty exciting. Uh, Want to put on names, some names? I mean, who called you? Yeah, yeah. John Boehner called. Uh, very gracious call. We had a good chat. And Kevin McCarthy and the, several other from the uh, Virginia delegation. My neighbor, uh, Randy Forbes, uh, uh, in my backyard as well. All right. Well, let's go right to some of the issues. You are a professor of economics, so naturally the first question I want to ask you is the recent news that the economy contracted 2.9 percent, which was a dismal number, uh, one that we didn't expect it. If you go to Congress, what are you going to do about our economy? Or as a professor, what can you suggest we do to fix it? Right, right. Well, that's a great question, Greta. I uh, did my uh, Ph.D. in, in cross-country economic growth. And so uh, to get the economy going, I mean, the tradi traditional answer has always been tax cuts. We have uh, corporate rates that are, that are the highest in the world right now. Everybody knows we need to bring some of that money back home and invest here. Uh, we, we have not had a pro-growth agenda for years. We need to start mentioning that again, pro-growth. And uh, to get growth, you have to have capital working with people. So you need capital and physical, physical capital and human capital. And uh, so we need to set tax policies that will encourage capital accumulation for businesses and uh, get this economy moving again. And of course, uh, Obamacare, we need to get rid of that. We need to uh, defund that. That is stalting economic growth as well. Everybody knows firms are not hiring right now uh, because of the additional costs of Obamacare. Uh, people are working uh, less than 30 hours a week, so they have lower wages. Uh, and paying higher health care costs, so it's, it's devastating that average family out there. Uh, there's a lot we can do. Amnesty uh, is hurting us right now. We have thousands of folks crossing the border. Uh, the crony capitalists up in D.C. have been pursuing low, uh, cheap, right, well, cheap let, labor let, for themselves. Let me, let, me, let me separate a little bit of these topics um, for a second. Yeah. So I don't mean to interrupt you, but you mentioned amnesty, and I know that was one of the key issues that uh, you clobbered uh, Congressman Cantor over the head with during the campaign. I'm curious what you would do with the thousands of children that are crossing the border. Uh, what would you do about that? That's yeah, a humanitarian well, that, that, crisis. I mean, it's now turned into a yeah. health crisis. I mean, it's a lot of crisis. Right. Well, and as an economist, I mean, the reason we have those thousands crossing the border is because of poor policy in the first place. And so uh, I'm not responsible for the policy that brought that about. Uh, during the recession and financial crisis, that problem was taking care of itself. And then uh, some in the establishment and President Obama uh, started putting in place uh, bills that sound nice, the Kids Act, the Dream Act, the Enlist it? Act. It, it I, 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 I pretty yeah. much, I mean, I, I know all the, the arguments on both sides, but I, I'm more right. interested in, like, how are, how are you going to fix it if you come here? Because yeah. it's a crisis we're dealing yeah. with now. Yeah. No, well, the, the obvious first answer is you've got to shut down the border. Uh, that We've been promised that, that that would happen for 25 years now. It hasn't happened. And as a result, now we have the problems you're addressing. Uh, big business gets cheap labor, and the, I think each of these kids uh, is, you know, $250 a day. I think Eric Holder asked for $2 billion in additional funds. And so who pays that tab? Of course, the taxpayer does. And so, so we got to get do? the right policies in place in the first place. Right. you got to so get what, the what, you, yeah. what is What is the policy? What are you going to do? We got, I mean, these are kids that are right there right now. Yeah. That's the problem. What are you going to do right now? Uh, right now, I'm not in Congress right now, Greta, and so when I get there, I'll be responsible for that problem right now. That's a big problem you're putting on my plate, but uh, the, the key to that issue is I would not have had policies that allowed that to happen in the first you, place. You know, Professor, the problem is, is that in all likelihood you're, you're in a Republican district, you're likely going to be in Congress right now, and I, and I sort of think like people want to know what solutions you're bringing to Washington, because we have a lot of problems here, and so, yeah. you know, I, you know, that's not like, you know, do you have any, you know, any solution for that one? That's all. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, every night we see uh, folks, you know, taking jet skis across the river and all that kind of thing. We have to end that immediately. I mean, every single case you see, uh, we're not enforcing the current laws we have on the books. And so uh, that's the obvious place to begin, and uh, we're not even doing that. And so uh, if you're not going to enforce the current law, that's all I can recommend. Uh, we're a country of laws, uh, not of men, and that's where we need to start. All right, Iraq, uh, boots on the ground, no boots on the ground, airstrikes, no airstrikes. And look, nobody has the perfect answer, but I'm just trying to pick your brain. If you had to talk about it tonight, if you're in Congress, what are you thinking about it? Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking that, uh, again, uh, at the general level, uh, 
President Obama does not have a, a, a foreign policy uh, with any strategic uh, plans in place. He's, he's at best what would tactics. Be yours? What would be yours? I'm asking what you're bringing to Washington. Now what everybody's done wrong. I'm curious, like, do you have some, I'm just sort of picking your brain like a, like a professor would pick a student's brain. What's your, you know, right. what's your idea of what we should do? Not who's done yeah, wrong. Well, yeah. and there's a lot of blame yeah. in this city. Right. Yeah, I ran on the Republican creed. And uh, that's diametrically opposed uh, to the, the, the current uh, strategy of the president, which appears to be leading from behind. The Republican creed uh, says that peace is best achieved through a strong national defense. So I'd be with Ronald Reagan there. Obviously, Iraq is an infinitely complex uh, problem that needs to be assessed. I'd have to see all of the classified documents. Uh, before I would make any decision. So obviously I'm going to have to study that. That's what professors do. I would consult the best generals, the best minds in military policy. I've had courses and all that in the background, and so I'm ready to go. But, uh, yeah, I, I can't lay out our uh, strategic uh, foreign policy in a, in a, in a, in a quick uh, soundbite tonight. That, fair enough. I understand that. All right, let me ask you about the NSA and spying. This is a personal one of mine. For the life of me, I don't understand. The Fourth Amendment is very plain. You need a warrant. And uh, we've had a lot of spying on America without any warrants. Are you in the Van yeah. Susteren theory, like just read the, read the, read the uh, amendment and get a warrant? Or are you in the sort of the other uh, argument, the other side of this? Yeah, no, I mean, it, individually, uh, if, if a judge uh, has probable cause and wants to look at something in my record, they need an individual warrant. And so, yeah, I'm obviously opposed to these bulk warrants. Uh, where you can just go after thousands of people and invade well, and intrude on their them. rights the, in the first place. They're not getting yeah. warrants. Oh, no, the problem is there aren't even any bulk yeah. warrants. They've just been going out and seizing this stuff. And frankly, right. one, of the, one of the weapons they have is they don't, we, get the, we get the daylight scared out of us because if you object, the, the suggestion is, what do you want to do, get hit by terrorists? Of course, nobody wants to get hit by terrorists. Right. No, I mean, I agree with you. We're, right. The executive overreach of this president uh, is, it knows no bounds. And so we haven't been speaking up as members of Congress, and we need to, uh, the, the, you know, the primary role of a congressman is to uh, write the laws, legislate, but the second is oversight of the executive. And so I take that uh, responsibility seriously. Professor, thank you very much. Of course, we'll be watching uh, your race. Uh, you certainly have caught the attention of the nation uh, with your upset. Thank you, sir. No, thank you very much, Greta.